Where is the Federal Republic of Ambazonia, also known as the Southern Cameroons? It's hard to find on most maps because, well, it's still more of an idea than a reality. It's located here, between Cameroon and Nigeria. Or, that's where the people of Ambazonia want it to be located. But who are the people of Ambazonia? To answer that, we need to go back in time. Germany established a colony along what it called the Cameroon River in 1884. During World War I, French and British troops invaded, forcing all German forces out by 1916. Cameroon was then divided up, with France snagging most of it except for this section, bordering the British colony of Nigeria. This was divided into the Northern Cameroons and the Southern Cameroons. In 1960, France granted its Cameroon independence, but the British Cameroons never got this opportunity. Instead, the peoples of the northern and southern Cameroons each got to choose between joining Nigeria or throwing in their lot with the former French Cameroon. In the referendum, outright independence was not an option on the ballot. The northern Cameroons, which was majority Muslim, voted to become part of Nigeria. The southern Cameroons, which is majority Christian, voted the other way. Its leadership then quickly met with the leaders of the new Republic of Cameroon to agree on a joint constitution. The Fumban Agreement, as it was known, established the Federal Republic of Cameroon. In theory, this was an equal partnership between the two former colonies, but as the English-speaking Cameroonians, or Anglophones, soon learned, the French-speaking Cameroonians, or Francophones, weren't interested in treating them like equal partners. The federal structure quickly failed, and one reason was because it was so unequal. By population, East Cameroon was four times larger than West Cameroon. But there was an even bigger obstacle. Cameroonian President Amadou Ahijo. He simply ignored the Fumban Agreement and started centralizing power as quickly as possible. In 1972, claiming that the federal structure was slowing down progress, he declared Cameroon to be a unitary state and symbolically he reduced the number of stars on the flag from two to one. Many Anglophones felt betrayed, but there wasn't much they could do about it. A new president took power in 1982, Paul Bia, who is still in power today, since 1982. This guy has been the dictator of Cameroon for 40 years. Anyway, during the Cold War, Bia positioned Cameroon as a staunchly anti-communist country, which delighted America especially. Ever since, Western leaders have been more interested in keeping President Bia happy than the rights and well-being of the Anglophone population. To be fair, nearly everyone in Bia's Cameroon has had a terrible time, but the Anglophones have had extra problems. Government officials in Anglophone areas often only speak French. National entrance exams for professional schools are often only set in French. And government documents are often available, you guessed it, only in French. These are just a few examples from a long list of grievances, but basically Anglophones have long felt like second-class citizens, and this eventually led to the eruption of wide-scale protests in 2016. The Cameroonian government, led by Paul Bia, cracked down hard. But instead of ending the unrest, government violence only stoked tensions further, leading to what is now known as the Anglophone Crisis. On October 1st, 2017, a group of activists led by Sisku Julius Ayuk Tabe unilaterally declared the independence of the former British Southern Cameroons, calling it the Federal Republic of Ambazonia. By the way, Ambazonia is derived from the name of the nearby Ambus Bay. Not everyone likes this term though, and many Anglophones still prefer Southern Cameroons. A lack of unity has actually been a huge problem for Anglophone separatists in general. Ambazonian President Ayuk Tabe was arrested by Cameroonian forces in 2018, and Samuel Ikome Sako was appointed to replace him, except the next year, Ayuk Tabe insisted he was still president while in jail. This means the interim Ambazonian government has two rival presidents. There are also lots of other groups, some of which are nonviolent and some of which are really violent. Each answers to a different president or no president at all. With no united voice to speak for the people of Ambazonia or the Southern Cameroons, no one has the authority to negotiate with a central government, even if it was willing to negotiate, and no one speaks for Ambazonia on the international stage, which is a shame because Paul Bia's government continues to oppress the Anglophone population every day, often violently, and hardly anyone is noticing. Is a free and independent Ambazonia the solution? Maybe, but as long as Paul Bia and his faction remain in power, and the Anglophone opposition remains divided, that's a long way off. <laughs>